screening evaluations. Who really decides whether this patient is eligible or not? And we commonly see research coordinators making this decision. Whether that's appropriate or not depends on their credentials. Physical examinations performed by unqualified personnel, evaluations of adverse events. Evaluation means that you looked at the seri this, this adverse event, serious or not, and said it's related to the investigational product or related to something else. That takes somebody who's licensed to diagnose. So we want to make sure that we have properly credentialed individuals. Number four, assessments of primary endpoints. So that if the protocol has specific procedures that need to be done to prove the objectives of the protocol. These are focused procedures and activities in a, in a, in a study, definitely, for compliance, because they will impact our data integrity tremendously. So making sure, and hopefully this is not missed so much, because the protocol should be very specific on who should be allowed to be able to conduct those types of activities. Informed consent, this is a really interesting area now. The FDA came out with a statement to end of 2008, I think it was, or beginning of last year, asking, and so did the, the Office of Human Research Protection, asking the community of researchers, do we need to amend the informed consent regulations in Part 50? And they were focusing on the area of evaluating capacity to consent. So the informed consent process, not just the document itself, Think about who really needs to be there, and it's very much driven by the IRB a lot of times, and you can see through the signature page. So it should be clear to the investigator for this protocol, and it might be something to have standardized for all protocols, who you evaluate is required to be part of the consenting process. It might be that you allow just the coordinator. She might be a medical assistant or he, and not have uh, it might be an RN or whatever it is, but remember, this is the time of also evaluating eligibility. So there's a big push that the investigators involved. There's another push globally that if you're enrolling your own subjects, that a neutral physician is part of the consenting process because of the potential to lead the patient or the patient's relationship bias. 